We're in the room that is often called the heart of the home. And just like the heart in your chest, the heart of your home needs some maintenance too. And I'm not talking about cardio. Well, I sort of am. Where am I going with this? I'm talking about cleaning. We've got to clean the kitchen. So in this video, we're going through the best of the best Clean My Space videos to teach you how to clean each area of your kitchen in depth. I'm giving you an expert approach to each individual space in your kitchen so that when you tackle it, you'll know exactly what to do in the most efficient way possible using the best products, tools, and techniques. All right, let's get right into it and start by cleaning the kitchen sink. The kitchen sink really sets the stage for a clean kitchen. If your kitchen sink is full of dishes or crap in there, it is not gonna look good. But the other thing to keep in mind is that your kitchen sink is actually one of the dirtiest places in your home. So if you leave a sponge or a dish or a cup or some meat juice in there, bacteria starts to fester and other things can pick up that bacteria therefore causing cross-contamination, or odors can start to form in your sink. Now the other thing to keep in mind is that your sink contains a drain, and in your drain is food and all kinds of other stuff that you have dumped down that drain. So this sink can really be a hot spot for concern in the kitchen. That's why you've got to reel it in and clean it properly. So I'm going to walk you through step by step what you should do. I'm going to share with you some tips, things that you might not have thought of, and just some general ways that you can make your sink probably look better than it ever has. In other words, if your sink got a makeover, it would look 10 years younger. First, I'm dumping a half cup of baking soda down each drain. This is going to help deodorize everything while I'm cleaning, and then I'll run some hot water down there at the end. Next, I'm drenching the entire sink with all-purpose cleaner. Now, generally, soap and water is good enough to clean and get rid of bacteria in your sink. I've added some tea tree oil in there for some extra pizzazz. Now I'm sprinkling baking soda. This was a little aggressive, I used a lot, but baking soda in there as my scouring product. Now I'm spraying a paper towel with some plain white vinegar and I'm going to wrap this around the area of my faucet that has some hard water buildup and some crustiness in it. You can do this anywhere on your faucet though. I just needed to do it right there. Now I'm taking a toothbrush, I wet it with some all-purpose cleaner, I squirted some dish soap on there, and I'm going to use this to give a really nice deep clean to the area where the sink meets the countertop for this undermount model. But if you have a sink that sits above your countertop, you can do the exact same thing where your sink meets your counter. The idea here is that you really want to dig in with that toothbrush and get to some of that gunk that is otherwise hidden. Now I'm using the exact same technique to focus on my drain. I'm just putting some all-purpose cleaner there to wet it. I'm adding some dish soap to my toothbrush. I'm gonna to use some of that baking soda that's already there. And the toothbrush will really allow me to detail all of those little grooves and nooks and crannies around the drain that would otherwise be very difficult to reach. This is important because a clean drain can be hard to attain with just a sponge. Now that the heavy lifting is done, I'm using the back side of a double-sided sponge to give my sink a really good scrub down. You can also use a dish wand if you prefer. That's a nice alternative. It might be more comfortable for you. I just decided to use a sponge. And the soap from the all-purpose cleaner plus the baking soda is giving me every opportunity to really scour this sink well and I love using baking soda to get the sink super super clean. I'm working my way from the top spiraling my way down to the bottom and then cleaning the base. Now I'll hit it with some hot water. I like to use the spray setting but I don't really think it makes a difference and I'm going right from the top where the undermount is all the way down to the bottom. You want to make sure you don't miss too much otherwise you'll have trouble when you're trying to shine it up later. Now I'll take my cleaning toothbrush and I'm just going to work my way through those grooves on the faucet where I notice some gunk. I'm using the vinegar soaked cloth to wipe it. You can even kind of wedge it right in there and get some of that crud out. And then I'm using the toothbrush just to detail some other areas that I wanted to clean really well. Now is the fun part. I'm buffing everything out. So the rest of the faucet wasn't too bad, which is why it just needed a quick wipe and I'm using this large ultra plush microfiber cloth, it's a maker's of course, to shine and dry the sink. Now the cool part about this is if I notice that I've missed a spot, which I probably didn't, but I'm gonna show you how to do this anyway. 
You can spray some white vinegar and use it as a little bit of an eraser. So if you notice you've missed a spot or a water spot, spray some vinegar and buff it off. And now I'm gonna soak my faucet, which has hard water buildup on there, with some vinegar. So I've added the remainder of my vinegar to a Ziploc lock bag, and I'll leave this for a couple of hours. You should always be cleaning your kitchen sink, perhaps on a daily basis, but your dishwasher is something that you might not think about cleaning too often. Despite what people think, it is not a self-cleaning appliance, and there is a very specific way that you should maintain it so that A, it doesn't smell, B, it doesn't leave residue on your stuff, and C, it works for a good long time. Here's how to do it. The first thing to do is to unload your dishwasher after you've done a cycle of dishes. This is the prime time for you to clean a dishwasher as soon as you've gotten a load out. Now, I do wanna point out this is a brand new dishwasher for us, although it is nowhere near a brand new dishwasher. This is the one that we acquired when we moved into the house. I'm still getting acquainted with it, and to do this video, uh, I actually went online to the Kenmore website to look up exactly how to deal with this dishwasher and how to clean it. Uh, and where the filter was located, and I will get to that shortly. Uh, but if you are not 100% familiar with the inner workings of your dishwasher, take a minute, find the model, find the brand, and just go online and figure out how your dishwasher works. I'm just filling this measuring cup with white vinegar. That will be for later on at the end of this cleaning, but I just figured, hey, I might as well get it out of the way. Next, I'm removing the cutlery basket and the lower rack. This just makes the bottom area and the door much more accessible for cleaning. I'll clean the cutlery basket later, but I'm not gonna clean the bottom rack. It didn't need it. Now I'm taking an all-purpose spray and I'm spraying the frame of the dishwasher as well as the door of the dishwasher. I find that gets the grimiest. Now I'm mixing equal parts baking soda and dish soap and I'm going to apply it with a cleaning toothbrush to the gasket and the frame of the dishwasher. As I said, this gets the crustiest, the grossest, and you can just spend some time going around these areas. I also went into the detergent tray as well. Just a quick little bonus. And I'll also point out that the area underneath your dishwasher might get some like crusty brown drips, so just be aware of that. Now my dishwasher doesn't have a removable filter, but the one in my old house does, so I'm gonna cut to that for you. Take out your dishwasher filter, soak it in hot soapy water, give it like a good one hour relaxation spa bath, then get a nylon bristle brush, scrub it really well, rinse it and replace it. And before you close the dishwasher, just grab a paper towel and give the base a quick wipe down. The spinning arm was removable, so I actually just gave that a quick rinse. If you notice that you're not getting water coming out of the spinning arm the way you'd like to, or your dishes aren't getting as clean, you might wanna take some picture hanging wire and just quickly go in and out of those little holes that shoot the water. That can really help with efficiency. Now you can replace your spinning arm or your filter, and you can finish up any of the work around the frame and the gasket. So I just agitated everything after I applied that baking soda and dish soap mixture. Now I'm using some water to sort of loosen everything up and then a microfiber cloth to just wipe it and buff it. The door and the frame and the gasket practically look brand new. This was totally worth doing. Now I've got the cutlery basket and the bottom rack going back in and I'm going to put that cup of vinegar on the top rack of my dishwasher and run through a sanitized cycle. Now, you can do this with baking soda at the bottom. You can do this with a dishwashing cleaner tablet. As long as you do this with some sort of product that will help descale and deodorize your dishwasher, you're fine. Now, the exterior of my dishwasher being white does get a little bit discolored, so I'm using some baking soda on a cleaning toothbrush to remove some of that discoloration. Then I'll just clean it with some all-purpose cleaner and a microfiber cloth. And of course, if you have stainless steel appliances, you can give that a wipe down too. One thing I forgot to mention is your instrument panel. You do want to give that a little spray and wipe, and that's it. Another key appliance in the kitchen is the fridge. And yes, that needs a little cleaning every now and then too. So here's our video on how to clean a fridge. First things first, you gotta empty the fridge. Don't be judgmental here, just pull everything out and get it on your counter. What I did instead of unplugging my fridge is I actually turned off the cooling mechanism so that I wasn't wasting electricity during this process. You just have to make sure that you turn it back on at the end of the cleaning. 
Now, as with any cleaning task, I'm just working from the top to the bottom. That way I'm being strategic and I'm not forgetting anything. Next up, it's time to remove the baskets, the bins, and the shelves. If you're not too familiar with your fridge, I would say to do this slowly and carefully. That way you don't break anything. Having been in the cleaning business for a long time, I can tell you I have broken one or two fridge shelves and I've learned over the years, do it gingerly. Now I'm going to pre-treat the inside of the fridge with a simple all-purpose cleaner. We'll deal with that after. Next up, I'm sprinkling some baking soda in all of these little trays and bins and on the shelves, as well as spraying it with all-purpose cleaner. This is going to help provide a little bit of extra abrasion, deodorization, and stain removal. I've got a cleaning toothbrush, a microfiber cloth, and some all-purpose cleaner, and I'm going to tackle the inside of this fridge, moving from the top to the bottom, working my way from left to right. Now, I'm respraying any areas that I clean only because I wanna make sure that they're nice and wet when I'm actually giving them a wipe down. That way, if there are any stains, they'll come off easier. The cleaning toothbrush is there to get into those little grooves, particularly in the crisper drawer and the shelf area. Uh, you know, you can find like dried up pieces of lettuce or small little chunks of cheese that you really can't get out any other way aside from flicking them out with a little toothbrush. Finally, I'm tackling the gaskets, which are those little rubber seals around the doors. Those can get dirty and filthy over time, so use your cleaning toothbrush, give it a good little scrub, and then wipe it clean with a microfiber cloth. You can also do your door hinges at this time too. Now I'll take this double-sided sponge, I make sure it's damp, and then I'm going to tackle each one of these shelves and bins and drawers. It doesn't take too long. What I find is when they've had a chance to pre-treat, they clean up much easier, and that baking soda really helps remove any of the extra gunky stuff that's been built up. Now, for these bigger items, I like to clean them and replace them one at a time because frankly, it can be really overwhelming to find counter space, particularly when all of your refrigerated items are on your counter as well. So for these bigger things, I would just clean them, dry them, and put them right back. Now, it's important that you dry everything really well because you don't wanna have excess moisture going back into the fridge after you've cleaned it. Again, if you're unsure how your shelves or your bins get reinstalled, just work slowly and make sure that you don't break or damage anything because these fridge components can be so expensive to replace. These panels of glass are also very challenging to work with, so just move slowly handle them gently, and when you're cleaning and rinsing and replacing them, just take a little bit of extra time. You've gotta take my word on this one. What can be particularly difficult to clean in your fridge are these little rings or stubborn spots that have just sat there and built up over time. 
That is what's gonna require the most amount of cleaning, but that baking soda and all-purpose cleaner combo really helps remove any of that stickiness. The other thing you might notice, particularly in your crisper drawers, are stains from, you know, zucchini or broccoli or kale or whatever have you that sat at the bottom of the bin for a long time and eventually discolored it. This is something that you might be able to remove with a bit of baking soda and hydrogen peroxide. So you can always give that trick a shot as well. Now these bins came out pretty nice and clean, so I'm pretty happy. My fridge, I think, actually looks better than the day I moved in. Now, I'm going to start filling it back up. What I do is have a microfiber cloth and a little bit of all-purpose cleaner handy. And before I replace an item, of course I make sure, yeah, I still want it, I still need it, and it's still edible. And the next thing I'll do is give the bottom of that container a wipe. That's why you see me doing this in fast motion. I'm just holding, wiping, replacing and anything that I'm not keeping, I'm just leaving on the counter. This is also a great chance for you to take inventory of what's in your fridge, what you might be out of, you know, do I need more pesto? Is that coconut milk just about finished? You know, you can really start to keep track of things and make a mental note of what you're looking for. Always important to replace your box of baking soda. You should be doing this four times a year or at the change of every season. It just helps your fridge stay a little fresher and your food tastes better. Your floor is actually pretty crusty at the end of a fridge cleaning, so you wanna make sure that you give that a nice clean. And of course, I turn the temperature back on in the fridge as well. Cleaning a self-cleaning oven is self-explanatory. You hit a button and away you go. But if you have a non-self-cleaning oven, that can be a bit of a challenge. So that's why we put a video together specifically to teach you how to clean a non-self-cleaning oven. Here it is. Cleaning your oven really is a choose your own adventure type cleaning task because you can dial it up or dial it down as much as you want. In other words, depending on how much effort you want to put in, you can really go full force or you can kind of squeak by. So today I'm just going to be showing you how to clean the cavity of the oven itself. I've got a couple of other reference videos I'll link for you down below on this topic, but a few things I want to point out. First and foremost, Cleaning the oven really should happen on a fairly regular basis. I can't tell you, I can't like prescribe an exact amount of time. You'll know based on how frequently you cook and how frequently things bubble over. But essentially when you start to see spills and you know crusty buildup at the bottom of the oven, it'll eventually cook and cook and cook until it becomes carbonized or like blackened. And then what'll happen is you'll start to get smoke when you're cooking, it'll affect the flavors of your food, you'll kind of think your kitchen's on fire. So that's why it's really important to kind of stay on top of this and make sure that you're cleaning your oven when you start to see and smell those cues. Now when you're actually in the oven, aside from removing the racks, you wanna be really careful that you're not getting product into fans if you have a convection oven or into any of the burners or coils or heating elements that are inside your oven either. You actually wanna be really careful around that because you don't wanna cause any damage. So when you're cleaning the inside cavity, just work your way around that. Now let's talk about in between those two glass panes in the oven door. They are, they are a pain, okay? And the thing is, you can't really clean them. I mean, you can, you will just void your warranty if you do it because you've got to take the door apart and oven manufacturers don't like when we try to do that stuff ourselves. Now you can kind of jimmy rig something where you put paper towel over a fly swatter and stick it up, fine. If you want to try that, you can. I'm not going to demo that in this video because I don't have time for it, but if you want to try that, you certainly can. Just keep in mind, don't take your oven door apart. You will void the warranty. You'll probably notice here that I have some very simple cleaning products and easy to find household cleaning tools. That's because oven cleaning doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be harsh. You just have to know what you're doing and have a plan of attack. 
I'm not a firm believer in using heavy duty oven cleaning chemicals. First of all, I'm not totally comfortable using them. And second of all, I don't want those chemicals in my oven that will then cook food that me and my family will eat. So that's why I like to keep it pretty simple. I'm gonna give you a rundown of the things that I have here uh, so that you can grab them and clean along with me. First and foremost, got some paper towel. I've got microfiber cloth and vinegar. This is for after the fact. We're not using this during the cleaning. I've then got dish soap and baking soda. That's right, I bought it from the bulk food store um, that we're gonna be using as our main product for cleaning the oven. I've got a scraper. You can use a windshield scraper, old credit card, or one of these. I'll link it for you down below. Then I've got a Scotch-Brite heavy-duty scrub pad. Love these for this task. And I've, oops, and I've also got some steel wool which I probably won't use, but it's always good to have on hand in case you need to level up a bit. Oh, and I also have some newspaper, which I'll be putting on the floor to catch all the dirt. Today, I'm also going to be cleaning the drawer and the area under the drawer. So I will start by removing everything from the drawer. And this is just good general practice because when you're cleaning your oven, you might get some liquid dripping in. Next up, I'm removing the oven racks as well. You can clean those in the bathtub. I've got that video for you linked below. Now, lining the area with newspaper is a good idea. It just saves you from having to do additional cleanup afterward. Looking inside the cavity of the oven, if you will, you'll see there's quite a bit of buildup in there and some of it's loose and some of it is hardened on, which is why I'm using this scraper to do some cursory cleaning. I want to get off as much as I can so that I don't actually have to scrub and clean that mess up. So I'm just using a paper towel to do that, wiping it all out. Now I'm making up a solution, four parts baking soda, one part dish soap, one part water. I'll stir it up and you want to have a nice thick paste so you can fiddle around with the consistency if you want it a little bit thinner, go for it. I'm just applying it by hand here. I'm sure there's a more eloquent way to do it, but I just felt like going crazy, crazy town. So here I am, I'm putting it on the sides, even on the door, but I have a feeling I'm gonna do the door with Barkeeper's Friend. Now I'm removing that drawer and just using a handheld vacuum to get under, because seriously, who is pulling out their oven? And I found a giant spider web, so it was a good thing I did it. Now I'm using a paper towel to wipe out any of the debris, and then I'm giving it a good spray because obviously I can't put this in the sink. I'm using a soap filled sponge just to give it a good scrub down. Then I'm going to use a wet microfiber cloth to rinse the interior of this drawer and I can put it off to the side. Little pro tip here is to put a towel down so that your knees don't get sore. Now in that bowl, I've just got some water. I've waited 30 minutes, by the way, to do this. That product has sat for 30 minutes and I'm just starting to scrub. Now you guys will notice I'm using my left hand only. My right shoulder, for those of you who don't know, I dislocated it a while ago, so I actually can't clean with that arm, and it is my dominant arm, so my cleaning chops are a little bit suffering right now, but bear with me. So I'm doing a mix of the scraper and the heavy duty scrub pad, making sure to get the sides, the back, and of course the bottom as well. I'm gonna give this window a good cleaning, but again, I'm just gonna use Barkeeper's Friend because it needs that extra oomph. It took me between five and 10 minutes to scrub inside that oven. And again, I was using my non-dominant hand, so I didn't get the best results. But that's essentially the technique that you're going to use. And now I'm just using water and microfiber cloths to quote unquote rinse the inside of the oven because baking soda leaves a residue behind. I'm gonna finish it up with a vinegar rinse here. So I'm just taking another microfiber cloth and giving everything a final wipe down with some vinegar. That just helps to cut any residual grease and polish things up in there. Now I'm splashing water onto the interior oven window and I'm sprinkling Barkeeper's Friend on there. It's a super powerful product, but you can only use it on the glass in here. I'm using that heavy duty scrub pad to get all of that build up off. It really does take a little bit of effort, actually a lot of elbow grease, but it does come off and this window ended, coming, ended up coming out beautifully clean. So here I'm using a microfiber cloth dipped in water to quote unquote rinse it off. You may want to do it once or twice. And you can see that glass is clean. I mean, the interior panels are another story, but the glass itself is very clean. 
Cleaning countertops is something that should be done on a fairly regular basis, at least more regularly than you're cleaning your oven. Now this video comes from our old house, so don't be too shocked when you see me in a different kitchen, but here is how to clean a kitchen counter. First, we need to figure out what material your counter is. It can be quartz, like mine. It could be granite, marble, which are stone. It could be laminate, corian, formica, tile and grout, or cement, or even stainless steel. I think that covers probably most of the counters you're gonna see out there in the world. Now, since YouTube favors shorter videos, I'm not gonna get into all the specifics and care instructions for each material, but what you can do is pay a quick visit to the manufacturer's or installer's website, or play it like the 90s and just pick up the phone and call them and find out exactly what they recommend for care. Some general basics I can give you are this. Counters don't like heat, abrasive materials, and vinegar will ruin natural and man-made stone countertops. And bleach, don't even think about it. It will probably stain almost any counter surface, and if you want to disinfect your counters, I've got a way for you to do it. Let's just cover some general care tips for your counters, regardless of what kind you have. Always use a trivet or a rack when anything hot comes out of the stove or the oven because heat can permanently damage a surface. Wipe up all your spills ASAP. If not, they're gonna set and become really difficult to remove. Some non-porous materials like Corian are impervious to stains, but still, why risk it? Use the most basic cleaner for daily care and something with a disinfectant for post-meal or contaminant cleanup. I've got recipes and videos on those topics, which I will link down below for you. Sealants are also available for countertop surfaces. A sealant is designed to prevent stains and damage to the original surface, but since we use our kitchen counters all the time and clean them, the sealant comes off after a while. You can reseal your counters annually and purchase the appropriate sealant at a big box store. I know this sounds complicated, but trust me, it is much easier than it sounds, my friends. I myself have been there. The panic of a terrible stain setting in on your beautiful counters and the fear that that stain is going to be an everlasting reminder of your laziness or bad cooking skills. But not to worry because I have some answers for you. Firstly, you must know that certain finishes will scratch or stain and you can't use anything abrasive or acidic on them, so we've got to get creative. That's why it's important to know your finish and its specific care instructions. Any method you use to remove a stain on your counter must be tested in a small hidden corner that your landlord or future home purchasers are never going to find. Once you've seen no damage, then proceed. Now for scratchable surfaces like stone, I have found great success and I have experimented like crazy in mixing up a small batch of one scoop of OxyClean to a cup of hot water, placing a piece of plastic wrap over the stain with some of that product applied. The plastic helps keep it wet. I then leave it for about 10, 20, 30 minutes until the stain lifts off and then I wipe everything away. Literally every terrible stain I've gotten on my new counter has come right off with that solution. Now if you don't have OxyClean, you can try using acetone or hydrogen peroxide as stain removers. Again, remember to test them first and don't mix those two items. For non-scratching surfaces, you can try a paste of baking soda and water, apply with your finger, leave for a few minutes, and then wipe in a circular motion to buff out the stain. You can also try a magic eraser, but again, be careful and test in a hidden area first. It's a good habit to keep a cloth and a spray bottle filled with your countertop cleaner of choice around and to create a habit of wiping up after you've used the kitchen. For example, if I'm making a snack, once I'm done, I'll just wipe the counter up, rinse the cloth and air dry it out. Now for anything with potential contaminants, say when I'm preparing the cat's raw food meals, as in raw meat, I clean up by using my disinfectant, leaving the product for the appropriate dwell time, about five minutes, and then wiping it up with a paper towel and of course tossing the paper towel. Now if you don't know what dwell time is, I will put a video down below for you to check out. If you're looking to give your kitchen a thorough cleaning, this is the truest, bluest, most proper way to clean your kitchen counter. Working clockwise, remove everything from the surface. 
work in sections to make this easier. Place items on the section of the counter to your right, or on the kitchen table, or even on the floor. Then, spray your counter with your cleaner of choice, let the product sit for the appropriate dwell time, then wipe with a microfiber cloth using an S pattern. Flip the cloth over and buff it dry to remove streaks, then get down to eye level and check for stains, spots, or crumbs, touch the counter up with anything that you've missed, finally replace each item, wiping it clean over the floor or the sink as you replace it. Repeat this as you work your way around the counter, and if you want to be mother-in-law clean, line your items up parallel and perpendicular to the edge of the counter to ensure clean lines. Cupboard fronts are a vertical surface, but even still, they get messy and dirty over time. So it's important to clean these surfaces as well, and there is a technique to doing it properly. So in this video, we're going to cover how to clean your kitchen cupboards. Before we approach cleaning anything, we want to know what it is we're dealing with, whether it's an appliance or a finish or a piece of furniture. Cabinets are no different. You could have a wood cabinet, a laminate cabinet, and then you could, you know, you could have a wood cabinet that's not painted. Then you can have different types of finishes on the cabinet. All of that is going to contribute to how you need to tackle cleaning. While I know it sounds easy to grab something like a magic eraser to scrub all of the crap off your cabinets, I want you to stop and think twice. Magic erasers or other abrasive products or cleaning tools like heavy duty sponges or an abrasive cleanser can actually damage the finish of your cabinet, which is something you don't want. You'll have those permanent marks that really won't be able to get rid of. So when we're approaching our cabinets, we wanna make sure that we're not using any abrasive products or tools. And the other thing we wanna stay away from is anything that is a solvent. In other words, anything that can dissolve a finish like paint or varnish, because that's going to lead to an uneven finish on your surface. And frankly, something that is probably difficult or maybe not possible to repair. For the products and tools that you should be using, I always recommend to start with the simplest stuff and work your way up only as needed. That way you're not using anything overly harsh on a surface that could have done just fine with something much more basic. So from a tools standpoint, you wanna have good quality microfiber cloths and a cleaning toothbrush and perhaps a steam cleaner, which I'll cover off in a sec. Now for products, for general cleaning of your surface, you can use our basic all-purpose cleaner, two cups of water, a little squirt of dish soap, or a store-bought all-purpose cleaner that you have hanging around. For grease, you know, stains or fingerprints, you can use something like an enzyme-based cleaner, and I'll link my favorite one for you down below that I think works really well. The reason you wanna use an enzyme cleaner to deal with fingerprints or grease is because enzymes actually digest or break down grease instead of you having to apply something harsh like a solvent or do any thorough scrubbing, which are the two things that we know are going to ruin that finish. So enzyme cleaners are really important. You can also use something like steam to deal with grease, which I can demonstrate for you. And finally, for those points of contact, handles, pulls, doorknobs, et cetera, you can grab a disinfectant and make sure that you're treating those specific areas with a disinfectant. To clean the exterior of your cabinets, you know, if there's like a little stain or mark there, you're just doing a general cleaning. This is how I would approach it. I would take a bottle of all-purpose cleaner and I would spray starting from the top, working my way to the bottom, and I'd work section by section. So this entire chunk of cabinets, I would do at once, both the top and the bottom. By the time I've done my spraying and maybe I've done one or two other things, about five minutes will have passed. That will be enough time for the all-purpose cleaner to sort of do its thing, work its way into any dirt, surface marks, etc., And then I can come back and give each cabinet a wipe down with a microfiber cloth using the S pattern, just working my way from the top to the bottom, making sure I get into all of the different grooves. Now, a couple of things you might wanna consider doing if you do have any grooves in your panel or any fancy footwork, I don't know exactly the design term for it, but to get in here every now and then, I'm not saying you know 50 times a year, but I'm saying maybe once or twice a year, you can use a cleaning toothbrush just to clean out any dirt, 
you know, grease, anything that's sort of built up. When I do heavy duty move in, move out cleans, that's often something that makes a really big difference. Kitchen cabinets also feature one of our favorite topics of late, points of contact. So what you would wanna consider as well is to simply spray this area with a disinfectant, or you can use a disinfecting wipe to give it a wipe down for a couple of seconds to scrub, not a couple of seconds. So you have to follow package instructions to make sure that you're getting the maximum benefit from your disinfecting product, whatever it may be. Uh, or you can treat it with some rubbing alcohol. But again, you have to be mindful of the type of finish and make sure that whatever disinfecting product you're using is safe for the particular finish that you have. I'd say the most difficult thing to clean off of a cabinet is grease, whether it's a greasy fingerprint or greasy splatter that's built up over time, that is going to be your biggest challenge. What you can use is an enzyme cleaner. I mentioned this earlier. I'm gonna give you a link to my favorite one down below. We also have a video on enzyme cleaners and if you're curious, you can check that out. But you wanna spray the enzyme cleaner on the surface and you wanna get it very wet. It should be dripping wet. Enzyme cleaners only work if the surface is wet for a few minutes, typically two to five minutes. Once that's done, you can then take your microfiber cloth and wipe. The lovely thing about enzyme cleaners is you really don't have to do any scrubbing. The product does the heavy lifting for you. And by the time the product has been wiped off, your grease should be gone. Now, if you have a steam cleaner handy, steam is really a great way to get rid of grease. So you would just load up your steamer with water, you'd plug it in, you would use the appropriate tool, nothing with scrubbing. You would just wanna aim straight steam over the stain itself. You can spray it on the surface and then have a cloth handy to wipe up any residual moisture or liquid the cabinets are gonna look great. Steam is very easy, but you do need to have a steam cleaner, so the choice is yours. To clean the interior of your cabinets, it's pretty straightforward. In fact, you can use any of the products that we've already talked about to tackle the exact same issues inside. I will say if you have a steam cleaner, it is really easy to just blast some steam in there and give everything a good wipe. One thing I will recommend, particularly if it's a pantry or somewhere where there are lots of crackers and chips and nuts, you know where this is going, is to remove everything and then give it a really good vacuum using a vacuum with a brush attachment or even a little handheld broom just to sweep all of the schmutz out of there before you start wiping down. You might also notice that there are some stains or some slide marks from you know repeated motions of you like sliding cans out. If you do see that, something you might wanna consider is using some shelf liner. It's pretty inexpensive. And the nice thing is, is it preserves the surface inside your cabinet. And you can get kind of fancy with it and get you know pretty prints. You have fun with it, whatever you want. Now the final thing I'll tell you about the interior cabinets is if you notice they're a little bit smelly, quick fix, just put a box of baking soda in there. It's actually a great trick for you know your spice cupboard or any area where you're storing anything that you know it might, might have a bit of an off smell. It's such an easy, inexpensive fix and it works like a charm. When we put this video together, we picked the areas that people asked us about the most frequently when it came to cleaning the kitchen. But is there something we left out? Let us know in the comments down below what area in the kitchen you find the most challenging that we didn't cover here. We obviously have plenty of Clean My Space videos, over 700 for you to check out, but you let us know. If you felt really motivated to clean your kitchen after watching this video, imagine watching the same video, but all about cleaning your bathroom. You can check that one out right over here. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the Clean My Space channel. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.